years ago, there was a small remote village in Nigeria called Udo. Villagers went about their days fetching water, tending farms, and caring for livestock while they whisper stories to each other about signs and old prophecies. One prophecy loomed large over Udo, that one day a special child would be born with the power to save the village from a great calamity. No one knew when or how such a prophecy might come to pass, but the villagers thought about the prophecy a lot, especially when times were scary. For Ajani and his wife Ngozi, the prophecy became extra meaningful the day Ngozi went into labor to have her baby. The couple had been trying to have a baby for many years without success. Ngozi finally being able to get pregnant and deliver the baby safely seemed like a miracle. When Ajani first held his new baby boy, Kelechi, he felt great joy. The baby had lots of black hair and cried loudly, making Ajani laugh happily. Finally, he had a son to carry on the family name and help work the fields when older. Ajani thanked the ancestors for this wonderful gift. In the first months, Kelechi seemed normal. He nursed strongly and grew bigger every day. But around five months old, Ajani noticed something strange. A tiny tail was growing above Kelechi's bottom. Ajani shook his head in disbelief, but over the next weeks the tail kept growing, finally reaching three inches long. Fear entered Ajani's heart. What could this mean? He had never seen anything like it. Ngozi was worried too, but hoped it was nothing serious. The tail did not hurt Kelechi or cause other problems. In every other way, he was a normal, healthy baby. By Kelechi's first birthday, the tail had grown to nine inches long. It had fine black fur that matched his hair. Ajani and Ngozi could no longer hide or deny it, though they wanted to protect their son from harm or judgment. In the village, strange rumors spread about the baby born with a tail. Some called him cursed, monkey boy or evil child. Friends and neighbors avoided visiting Ajani's hut. Only the wise old medicine woman, Mama Decay, saw the tale as a divinely inspired occurrence. She alone retained faith in the prophecy that this special child was meant to save them all. The villagers refused to heed Mama Decay's words. They were preoccupied with their many other troubles. Raiding parties from the fierce bandit leader Ndidi and his men were terrorizing the village from time to time, stealing their livestock and grain and sometimes taking women in the village as captives. No one knows the hideout of these robbers, but it is believed that they reside deep in the jungle. Ndidi had vowed to make everyone in the village pay for such unfair treatment they did to her mother with his last breath. What could be the motivation behind Ndidi's anger? And why is he so bent on taking revenge on the Udo village? Okay, let me tell you the backstory of what happened to Ndidi's mother. Many years ago, a young woman named Chika found herself cast out from Udo village after getting pregnant without being married. The unforgiving villagers rejected her as the child's father refused to marry her. With no family left, Chika wandered into the jungle alone. She eventually gave birth to a son she named Ndidi. They managed to survive in the wilderness together through Chika's fierce determination. She refused all offers to return to the village that had been so cruel to her. One day when Ndidi was seven years old, Chika went to the riverbank for water but never came back. After many hours, Ndidi found her body there. She had been bitten by a deadly snake. Overcome with grief and anger, Ndidi cried out in pain into the night. Ndidi was young at the time, but he remembered everything as if it happened yesterday. He swore revenge on the village that had sentenced his mother to die alone in the jungle. From that day on, hatred toward Udo grew inside him. As a teenager, Ndidi's anger and strength only increased. 
he wrestled alligators and roamed the jungle as if he owned it. When he was 18, he met a group of armed men passing through. Impressed by Ndidi's boldness, they asked him to join their bandit gang. Ndidi saw this as the perfect chance to get revenge. He quickly rose up the ranks with his bravery and skill in raids. When the old leader died over a fight, Ndidi took charge. Now, as the new leader, he could finally punish Udo village for their past wrongs. Ndidi planned random raids to terrorize, rob, and kidnap people from Udo. He enjoyed seeing fear in the villagers' eyes when his men attacked. Their suffering would be his long-awaited payback. After every raid, he hoped his mother's spirit rested more peacefully. Okay, back to the story. The people of Udo lived in fear of the next attack. Ajani and Ngozi focused on protecting young Kelechi from harm while hoping someday the villagers would see past his tail to the good heart underneath. Kelechi grew up lonely and doubted if he could ever find acceptance, wondering about his unknown destiny because the villagers' fear and superstition only increased. By age five, Kelechi's tail had grown to two feet long, strong and flexible like a monkey's. It twitched and waved behind him constantly, impossible now to hide. Kelechi was a gentle, quiet boy who did not understand why the other children shunned and taunted him. Their cruel words cut him deeply. One day, Kelechi saw the village boys and girls laughing and playing games outside their hut. But when he came out to join them with his tail happily swaying, they screamed and ran away. They threw stones, calling him evil and demon child. Kelechi retreated into the safety of his family's hut, tears streaming down his cheeks. His heart ached at the cruelty of the other children. He had only wanted to play with them, to feel normal and accepted for once. But their rejection cut deeply, confirming his worst fears that he would never belong in this village. Ngozi hugged her son as he cried. She petted his fuzzy tail to make him feel better. She hummed a lullaby that she used to sing to him when he was a baby. Kalechi held on tight to his mom. Her unconditional love for him made him feel safe. Do not despair, my child, Ngozi said once his sobs had quieted. Those children do not understand you as I do, but one day they will see your goodness and your worth. Kelechi looked up at her with watery eyes. But why was I born this way, Mama? Why me? Ngozi smiled softly, wiping the tears from his cheeks with her thumb. Because you have been blessed, my love, the ancestors chose you for a special purpose, though we do not yet know what it is. She leaned down to press a kiss between his ears. Never forget who you are, Kelechi. You are my precious son and the ancestors' chosen one. Your tale makes you unique and special. Kelechi managed a small smile at his mother's reassurance. If she believed in him, perhaps there was hope he could find belonging after all. Just then, Ajani ducked through the low doorway. He looked worried. When he saw that his son had been crying and had tears on his face, Ajani frowned even more. Who made you cry? Ajani asked in a deep voice. Was it the other children again? He clenched his fists. I warned them what would happen if they continued tormenting my son. Calm down, my husband. Ngozi warned, standing up and putting her hand on his arm. Getting angry and making threats won't change how they feel. The kids are being mean because they are scared and don't understand. We have to be patient. Ajani's shoulders slumped. You speak wisdom as always, wife, but it pains me to see our boy suffer so. Ajani turned to look at Kalechi. I only want to protect you, son. If I could shield you from all hurt, I know, Baba, Kelechi said. Though quiet by nature, Ajani's protectiveness made him feel safe. He knew his father loved him deeply. 
Ngozi pointed to the clay pots in the corner of the hut. Come, it is time to prepare the evening meal. Kelechi was glad for the distraction. He fetched water from the well while his parents kindled the cooking fire. Doing the normal things at home made him feel better. He tried to push the other children's cruelty from his mind. As daylight faded, the family ate bowls of yolof rice by firelight. Ngozi told folktales passed down from their ancestors, making Kelechi and Ajani laugh. For now, all was peaceful. But later that night, Kelechi couldn't fall asleep. He lay awake on his mat, long after his parents had already gone to sleep. His tail kept twitching as he thought about things that worried him. Why had he been born this way? What was his purpose if the villagers would never accept him? These questions kept going around and around in Kelechi's mind. Finally, he fell into a restless sleep full of dreams. Over the next few years, life continued much the same. Kelechi kept to himself, wary of attracting unwanted attention. The villagers maintained their superstitious whispers and suspicious looks whenever he ventured through town. The cruelty of the children eased somewhat as they grew older, but they remained aloof, never inviting Kelechi to join their games. Kelechi felt very lonely as he did his chores, taking care of his family's goats in the hills outside the village. His tail dragged sadly in the dirt behind him. He felt like his tail was a burden, not the blessing his mother said it was. That night, Kelechi talked to his friend, an old solid tree in front of their hut. He was very sad. He put his hands on the bumpy tree trunk. He told the tree how hopeless he felt and how he doubted himself. The tree did not talk back, but it was a good listener. Standing next to the solid old tree made Kelechi feel a little better. From the edge of the village, old Dike watched Kelechi closely, smiling to himself. The child's spirit was strong, even under such duress. Decay's aged eyes saw what others could not, the glimmer of destiny about the boy. Kelechi was special. Someday, he will be a great leader. Decay was certain of it. Kelechi woke up early in the morning, like he did every day. He was still tired from training with his dad yesterday, but he got up quickly, not wanting to waste any time. After washing up and getting dressed, he went outside into the misty morning air. The village was quiet and still. Most people were not awake yet this early. Kelechi enjoyed the peace and quiet. It was the only time he could move around freely without people giving him mean looks and saying bad things. Kelechi went to the nearby forest, his tail swinging excitedly. Under the cool tree leaves, he started running. He jumped over fallen logs and ducked under low branches. He pushed his muscles hard, using his tail to go faster and higher. Running made him forget his worries and just feel joy and freedom. After running, Kelechi stopped by a hidden pond to catch his breath. His muscles were pleasantly tired. He crouched down and looked at his reflection in the still water. He saw his familiar face, serious brown eyes, high cheekbones and angular jaw. But below was an image that was strange to him, his long, dark tail that made him different. Cursed. Kelechi frowned and stood up. Why did he have to be born this way? Without this awful tail, he could be like any other boy in the village, with friends and a normal life. His bitter thoughts were interrupted by the growing noise back in the village. The day was starting. With a sigh, Kelechi turned and headed home. Far away from the village, hidden deep in the jungle, was the hideout of Ndidi the bandit leader. It had been a long time since their last good raid. His men were getting restless. The recent storms had also damaged their hideout. They would need to attack a village again soon. Sitting near the flickering campfire, deep in the jungle, 
His raiders crowded around him. Their eyes showed fear, but also greed. Andidi thought about which nearby villages they could raid. He remembered Udo had very poor defenses when he scouted it before. Yes, Udo would be perfect. The raid would remind the villagers to fear him, and he could steal their grain, animals, and other things. With a deep rumbling voice, Ndidi outlined his plan to strike Udo village once more. We will attack them at dawn, he said, drawing a path in the dirt with a stick. Half of you steal the cows. The others take as much grain as you can grab. And if anyone tries to stop you, Ndidi slammed his fist into his hand with a loud smack that showed what would happen. Ndidi looked at Basi, his second in command. Take some men tonight to scout their defenses, he ordered. We will attack in two days. Basi nodded, his eyes shining with excitement. The raiders yelled and waved their weapons. Soon the village of Udo would learn what happens when you stand up to Ndidi and his men. Udo's peace would not last much longer. Meanwhile, in Udo village, Chief Okenwa sat among his council of elders. They all looked worried. The land was having problems. Cows were getting sick and dying. Crops were drying up in the fields. Every day, the villager felt sadder and more uneasy. Our people grow more desperate every day. One elder said sadly, if the gods are not pleased soon, I fear what more we may suffer. The others murmured in agreement. Since the abnormal boy's birth, Udo had been cursed with poor harvests, sick animals, and bad luck. Deciding their next steps was very urgent. Okenwa stayed quiet, listening to each person, but in his mind, the decision was already made. As chief, the village's well-being had to come first. Even though difficult, the boy Kalichi had to be banished for prosperity to return. The debate went on for long. Okenwa finally held up his hand. Enough, he said. For our people's good, the boy, Kalichi, must leave. A sad silence filled the room. The chief could picture the loneliness ahead for young Kalichi, and his heart grieved over what had to happen. But he hardened his resolve. One boy's life against an entire village was no choice at all. The chief considered this. Yes, banishing the boy could appease the gods and end this plague upon their home. It shall be done, the chief declared. One way or another, Kilichi must go. Kalechi did not know about the plans against him. He came home to find his father waiting. You're late, boy, Ajani said in his deep voice. He held his staff in his hands. Even though he was older now, Kalechi's father was still a huge strong man. It's time for your lessons. Kalechi looked down. Yes, father, I'm ready. They went to the small yard beside their hut. Ajani had made a packed dirt circle there for practice. Get in your stance, he ordered. Kelechi obeyed and got into the poses his father had taught him day after day. He moved from one pose to the next, holding his tail tight for balance. Remember, you are strong, but others will see you as weak, Ajani said. He watched Kelechi closely. You must be prepared. Also remember, son, balance is key. Your tail is your advantage. Use it. Kalechi nodded. The villagers may insult and shun you, but never doubt your worth, Ajani said, holding Kalechi's gaze. Stay kind, stay vigilant, and remember all I've taught you. A warrior controls his power. He does not let anger control him. His dad wanted him to be ready for the hate and violence he would face because of his tail. The training was about focus and discipline, not just fighting or combat skill. Kelechi nodded, sweat dripping on his brow as he focused on his father's every move. They sparred gently at first, but soon Ajani's blows came faster, each one blocked by Kelechi's tail. Good, again, Ajani yelled. Kelechi moved like water flowing over rocks. Each hit and block told a story of survival. 
In her modest kitchen, Ngozi ground herbs with a mortar and pestle, getting breakfast ready for the family. Her thoughts were focused. She knew her son's life was full of danger and misunderstanding. A knock at the door broke her focus. Standing there was Mama Decay, her eyes twinkling with unspoken knowledge. Ngozi, she began softly, I see greatness in Kelechi. He bears more than just a tale. He carries our ancestors' hopes. Ngozi welcomed her inside, her heart lightened by her words. Mama Dike sat in his usual spot by the fire. She watched Kelechi training with Ajani closely. The old medicine woman couldn't help but smile. She saw each leap and jump as a verse from an ancient story coming to life. He is indeed special, Ngozi said quietly. Yes, DK nodded, and in time, all will see it. Eventually, Ajani ended the lesson and Kelechi bowed with respect. His body ached, but his mind felt ready for anything. They went inside where Ngozi had set the table. Mama DK joined them for breakfast. Eat up, Ngozi said gently, you'll need your strength. Decay encouraged Kelechi not to give up, no matter how the villagers treated him. Kelechi smiled, grateful. With his family and Decay beside him, he could face anything, even this village and its hate. At the age of 15, the hardships of Udo village had moved from bad to worse, and they still blamed it on Kelechi. One faithfully evening, it started raining very heavily in the village. Huge raindrops poured down fast in an angry storm. The hard rain turned the dirt paths into flowing mud rivers. Strong wind blew through the roofs made of straw. It was that same night, the villagers decided they had had enough. Even though the rain was making their clothes all wet, a big angry crowd of at least 30 men, women, and even some kids with their flickering torches marched strongly through the storm. They were heading to the home of Kalechi and his parents. Evil child, an old woman yelled as she hobbled along with the group, holding tight to her walking stick with her wrinkled hands. He's brought a curse upon us all. Some other villagers shouted in agreement. Months of no rain and sickness had been hard on them. Crops dried up, cows got sick, Kids went hungry. The people of Udo blamed Kelechi because his tail made him look different and strange. They thought he was cursed. The angry crowd came to Kelechi's hut, their torchlights flickering in the rain. His dad, Ajani, stood strong in the doorway with an upset face. Behind him, Kelechi's mom, Ngozi, held her son, looking scared. Please, Ajani said, leave the boy alone and let's talk about this calmly. the village chief pushed his way to the front of the crowd. Your son is an abomination, he shouted with anger. Our village has suffered long enough under his curse. He must leave now. The crowd yelled in agreement. Some started throwing stones, but Ajani blocked them. Kelechi looked out from behind his mom, frowning with worry. He had known this day might come, though he wished the villagers would finally accept him. Ngozi hurried to her room. Her hands were shaking as she quickly packed important things into a burlap sack. Dried meat, healing plants, torchlight, a spare outfit, sandals, a woven blanket. Every item she put in the bag made her sadder. The crowd got louder. Their yelling heard even over the constant beating of the rain. Kalechi's tail swung back and forth, showing how upset he was. He could feel how desperate his dad was and how sad his mom was, even though they didn't show it. Ngozi turned to her son and gave him a special necklace with a polished stone pendant. It looked very beautiful. This has been passed down in my family for generations. It will protect you. Keep it close. Thank you, Mama. Kelechi was very appreciative of the gift. The necklace felt like it was alive when he wore it a quiet promise to look after him when her mother wasn't there. They shared one last desperate embrace. Go, my son, 
she whispered with a sad voice, tears mingling with the rain on her cheeks. You must survive tonight. Never forget that you are good, no matter what they say. Never give up. Always remember who you are, the choice of the ancestors. We will find you someday. Before Kelechi would reply with any more words, Ajani was pushed out of the way as the angry villagers rushed into the hut. There were too many villagers for Ajani to stop. Their anger pushed them forward. They broke down the door. Rough hands grabbed Kelechi and pulled him outside into the storm. Gozi screamed and tried to fight against Ajani as he held her back. The village chief looked at Kelechi for a moment and seemed a little ashamed. But then his face got hard and determined again. Go, he commanded, pointing to the dark jungle behind the village. That is where you belong. Do not return or you will be stoned. The villagers yelled happily as Kelechi was pushed down the muddy road. He looked back once at his parents and gave a little brave smile. Tears blurred Kelechi's vision as he stumbled into the rain-soaked night. Mama Decay stood away from the crowd. She looked very upset and pained. This is madness. You will regret this, she warned them, pointing her shaking finger at their angry faces. The boy is not what is causing our problems. For so many months, we had no rain. But now it is raining, and instead of thanking the gods for the rain, you are being mean to this poor boy. Mama Decay said this, shaking her head in sadness. She made it clear she never approved of their actions. But the villagers gave deaf ears to the wise sayings of Mama Decay. Kelechi was very frightened and tensed as he ran into the jungle, a destiny he never chose for himself. Kelechi ran without looking back the mud slick beneath his bare feet as he navigated through familiar paths now made strange by betrayal. His heart raced, a wild drumbeat sinking with his tail that cut through the heavy air behind him. The village lights receded until darkness swallowed them whole. Then the jungle swallowed him up too. Sharp vines scratched Kelechi's skin and clothes. Rain pounded down through the dense canopy overhead. Strange cries echoed around him. Animals, spirits, things unknown. Still, Kelechi held his head high. He would not be afraid. He would survive this and someday return home, like his mother assured him. The people of Udo may have branded him cursed, but they did not know the true power hidden within this boy. Kelechi vowed he would prove them wrong. He would take his first steps into the jungle, not as a helpless victim, but as a survivor. Holding his necklace, Kelechi sent a prayer to the gods for courage, wisdom, and protection. The necklace seemed to glow faintly, infusing him with inner strength. When lightning flashed in the sky, Kelechi's eyes shone with determination. With his necklace and his parents' prayers to guide him, he would make it through this exile. Now he was in the unknown jungle where those like him belonged. Kelechi held the pendant, comforted by its warmth. He would make it through this night like his mom said, and one day he would go back home. With a cry, Kelechi sprinted into the shadows of the trees. He ran until his legs burned and his lungs screamed for air. Finally, he collapsed beneath a rocky overhang, breathing hard. Suddenly, he heard a faint voice calling his name. Kelechi, Kelechi, wake up. Kelechi, Kelechi, wake up. 